Our morale has never been lower, says IGN employees. Oh well, isn't this a wonderful piece of news to take with your morning coffee, eh? IGN, also known as the pounding, pulsating heart of pestilence, pumping shit, garbage and general muck through the metaphorical veins of video gaming, is tearing itself apart. And all I can really say is, where do I buy tickets? <laughs> because this is a show I want a front row seat to. It turns out, mysteriously enough, that allowing your company to be infiltrated by a horde of walkers who swiftly lay eggs in the now rotting carcass might not be for the best of the company. Weird, I know, yet nevertheless, here we are. All of this was of course sparked via IGN America, pointedly, posting this, prominently featuring the Palestine flag and urging people to donate money to Palestinian charities like the Palestinian Children's Relief Fund and Anira, both of which incidentally have been accused of uh, laundering money, both directly and indirectly, for terrorist organizations. Fine choices, IGN. Above any and all critique, undoubtedly. And yet, for some mysterious goddamn reason again, IGN Israel had apparently got a bit of a problem with this. <laughs> how, how weird. You know, they look out of their window and see the rockets flying by and they're like, hmm, our colleagues seem to approve of this. I've got a problem with it. Again, what a strange world in which we live. And apparently this was taken down by IGN's parent company, J2 Global, who also of course issued the infamous apology where they said that, hmm, you know what, posting the flag of one of the two warring parties and urging people to donate money to charities only that benefit one of the two warring parties it could conceivably view, be viewed as partisan <laughs> by an uncharitable mind, of course. Ay -ay -ay. And now IGN is going to continue the route as this action was seen as a major step over the boundaries between corporate ownership and editorial independence traditionally expected in free journalism. The cum-stained rag that is IGN clutches its pearls and goes, my journalistic integrity. <laughs> Not with all the will in the world could I ever take that seriously. <laughs> I mean, let's be clear here. On the, the rung, the ladder of the scummiest occupation in human history, you've got career politician right there at the bottom, and a mere one rang above it, you've got games journalists. No question about it, they are a rather horrific breed, let's be fair here. And allow me just one hand. The article starts out with a website dedicated to covering video games news and reviews claiming their free journalism to post a one-sided, completely biased article begging for aid to Palestine. Now, again, as I have said, I'm not going to offer too much of a commentary on the Israeli-Palestine conflict because it is tremendously complicated. And I don't know enough about it, but this is not a very nuanced take. Particularly, again, I remind you, I even made a video about this. Why the hell is a video game news and reviews website going, oh, hell, Palestine? What fucking business is that of yours? Seriously, what? Well, it's because of the wokest, of course, but the interesting thing here is the pearl clutching. I'm gonna have to make its own little video on this, I think, as a part of the gatekeeping title, something along the lines of make them choke on the cock of their own medicine. Uh, probably not quite that explicit because, you know, YouTube. Yet nevertheless, it will be there in spirit. Because now we've seen more and more journals getting yeeted off platforms like Twitter, Facebook, and even losing their jobs over quite spicy tweets. Um, very spicy in some cases. And oh boy, are they 
outraged. What? We have to play by the same rules, the filthy, dirty peasantry? How dare they? Yeah, turns out. And this apparently made the staff so pissed off that you even got people now openly posting that they want to help these charities. Again, the ones suspected of aiding terrorism. And blaming the parent company, all in the name of free journalism. Oh boy, is that the scummiest thing I think I've ever heard. So, the reverse now appears to be true. So they were told that apparently a corporate was listening. <laughs> By the way, if you are ever told corporate is listening, that means we're trying to figure out how to how to pin the blame on someone. Um, shut up and chill out for a few me weeks, okay? Or else we figure something out. And that is, of course, exactly what happened. As now, apparently, the editor of the piece has has taken full responsibility on himself. This was an editorial decision that had had, had nothing to do with corporate. Mm. I can almost I can almost feel the pressure of the corporate bull sack pressing down from above saying uh-uh you made a fucky wucky you get to clean it up and a big one too IGN, supposedly one of the largest websites dedicated to covering media games news and reviews these days I feel confident in stating that there's a fair few individual YouTubers with greater user bases than these shits but oh well not to mention is that not an absolute shame upon our generation that we have allowed a website like IGN to attain a position of prominence? Though, I suppose, they've got 230-odd employees? When you throw that much mud at the wall, I suppose some of it is bound to stick, isn't it? Now... What goes on here is, of course, now that they're they're also complaining, they're heading into IGN, their busiest time as they regurgitate the corporate news of other corporations, and morale is an all-time low. Following a further all-hands meeting attended by Ziff Davis, President Stephen Hodge, the executive described the issue as purely IGN editorial problem, which IGN editorial, and by extension not its parent company, would clean up itself. They also pointed out that there was a um, there was a petition signed by IGN employees stating they want to have the article restored. They want to keep doing this because they see nothing wrong with it. Of course, they are wokest crazy people naturally, and the management pointed out hmm, it was the minority that signed this, wasn't it? The minority, only a handful of you, are actually crazy people. And the thing too is, the entire article, I'm not going to read too much of it because it's just defensive dribble in my opinion. It's very much so like, oh my god, we're being persecuted here. I am being oppressed. And very soon, mark my words, the scythe will come. For half a decade now, we have seen quote-unquote our side be near universally and exclusively targeted by cancel culture being cancelled for tweets for messages for videos for words spoken in private etc this has been the day-to-day -day norm well guess what pretty much all of the right wing has already been eaters deletest there is only one group of people left willing to shout nonsense like this and challenge the corporate overlords which they themselves have placed in power. Oh shit. Oh shit. We've, uh, we've eroded the freedoms we valued so much we ain't got a shield to stand behind anymore. And now they're taking down our articles. Entirely one-sidedly, and then making what was it? Um, oh, what was the one here? Ah, yes, they're making our dudes fall on the sword. Wow. You know what they say about beds making them and eventually getting quite violently struggle snuggled in them. <laughs> Enjoy. Try to relax your butthole. I hear it helps. <laughs> Happy day today. Happy day. Until next time, I've been Arch. Thank you all very much for watching and, uh, you know, celebrating with me.